God cast Satan out of heaven because of his sin and rebellion. Jesus mentioned witnessing Satan's fall from heaven like lightning, Luke 10, 18. But why didn't God just destroy Satan completely? In this Bible study, we will explore why God has not and will not kill Satan or his fallen angels. Satan is well known in modern society, but many don't realize that Satan means adversary or enemy. The term fallen one signifies a continuous state of falling, meaning Satan is constantly becoming more evil. Revelation describes him being thrown into a bottomless pit, symbolizing an endless fall. Pride, which leads to destruction as noted in Proverbs 16, 18, pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall progressively worsens one's state. Destruction doesn't always mean death, Psalm 1034 states that God redeems lives from destruction. Pride can ruin your relationships, finances, and opportunities while you are still alive. Humility is the key to reversing this downfall. Satan, also called Lucifer, is an ancient deceiver who has been trying to lead humanity away from God for thousands of years. He was once an angel in heaven, created to serve and worship God but he desired to be worshiped himself and to be equal to God. This led to his rebellion, where he gathered a group of angels, now known as fallen angels, to oppose God. Demons, unlike fallen angels, are disembodied spirits. The fierce war in heaven saw Archangel Michael and his angels battling Satan, depicted as a dragon, and his followers. Revelation 12, 7, 8 describes this conflict, then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. Despite Satan's expulsion, God did not destroy him. God is spirit, as stated in John 4.24, and Satan, being a spirit, cannot be killed. God's purpose for Satan's existence remains, as everything God creates serves a divine purpose. Even when creation chooses against God's will, God can use those choices for His glory. In Isaiah 14, we read about Satan's fall from heaven, highlighting his prideful declaration to ascend above God, only to be brought down to the pit. Another name for Satan is Lucifer, reflecting his fall from grace. The name Lucifer, meaning bringer of light, originally referred to a majestic being who held a high position in heaven. According to Isaiah, Lucifer's downfall stemmed from his prideful ambitions, leading to his expulsion from paradise. Ezekiel further elaborates on this, describing Lucifer as once perfect in wisdom and beauty, adorned with precious stones in Eden, the garden of God. However, unrighteousness grew within him, leading to his sin and subsequent casting out from God's presence. This narrative underscores the consequence of pride and disobedience even among heavenly beings illustrating Lucifer's transformation into Satan, the rebellious adversary who tempts and accuses humanity. In the New Testament, Satan continues to play a significant role as an adversary, seen in his temptation of Jesus in the desert and his ongoing accusations against believers. Jesus himself acknowledges Satan's fall from heaven, paralleling the Old Testament accounts. The apostles Peter and Jude also mention fallen angels, emphasizing their condemnation and impending judgment reinforcing the consequences of rebellion against God's authority. God's response to Lucifer's rebellion and Satan's subsequent activities underscores his justice and sovereignty. Despite Satan's influence, God remains supreme and his actions reflect his immutable nature. The belief in God's ultimate authority and justice, demonstrated through his handling of rebellious angels, assures believers that divine judgment awaits all who oppose his will affirming God's role as the ultimate judge of all creation. Some people think that God barely managed to keep heaven safe by driving out Satan and his demons. This view is a major mistake because it underestimates God's power. God has no rivals and no one, not even Satan, can come close to matching him. From God's perspective, the battle for heaven wasn't a real struggle at all. Satan had no chance of winning against the almighty creator of heaven and earth. This event is described in Revelation 12, 7, 11, Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. 
and the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who was called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, he was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they loved not their lives even unto death. This story shows a beautiful aspect of God's nature, his mercy. Instead of destroying Satan immediately, God allowed him to live, demonstrating his love for all his creatures, even those who do not love him back. God is all-knowing and understands every detail of the universe. He knows the thoughts and motives of every individual, including Satan and his demons. This knowledge allows him to have a unique perspective, seeing both sides of any story. The Bible tells us that Satan became prideful and jealous of God. God understood Satan's actions and reasons in complete detail, showing incredible compassion. Just like a loving father who gives his child many chances to correct their mistakes, God showed mercy towards Satan. One reason God did not destroy Satan and his followers is his understanding of their actions. While it may seem mad to us, God comprehends why Satan rebelled and has compassion for him. God values free will, which he gave to all his creation, including angels. Free will is essential for genuine love, as love cannot be forced but must be chosen. If God had punished or killed everyone who used their free will to reject him, it would not be a true choice. Therefore, the possibility of rebellion and redemption must coexist for free will to be genuine. Because God is just and fair, he respects Satan's decision to leave his position in heaven. Instead of eliminating those who choose wrongly, God allows them to live with their choices. Another theory for why God lets Satan and his demons continue after their rebellion is found in the New Testament. In the Gospels, Satan's role in Jesus' journey to the cross becomes evident. Even though Satan had rejected God, God might have used him to fulfill his ultimate plan to remove sin from the world. The first appearance of Satan in the New Testament is when he tempts Jesus in the desert. Satan tempts Jesus three times, but Jesus resists by quoting scripture, proving his worthiness to die for humanity's sins. Only an innocent person can take the place of the guilty, and Jesus, being sinless, was able to transfer his holiness to us through his sacrifice on the cross. This demonstrates that Jesus was fit to bear the sins of the world, possibly explaining why God allowed Satan to continue existing. Satan also played a significant role in the betrayal of Jesus by Judas Iscariot. Jesus had to be handed over to the officials to be crucified for the salvation of the world, and it was Satan who entered Judas, leading him to betray Jesus. This was part of God's greater plan for redemption. Satan, once an angel in heaven, rebelled against God and led a group of angels in a revolt. Instead of killing them, God cast them out of heaven as exiles. Perhaps God had a larger purpose for Satan, using him as a tool in his plan for redemption. God's immense love might have given Satan every opportunity to repent and return. Love cannot exist without choice, and God's desire for all creation is to love him freely. Therefore, God allows free will, even if it means some will reject him. He does not destroy those who do not choose him, as it would negate free will. Instead, God, being love itself, is incredibly patient. If you found this video enjoyable, please consider liking and sharing it. Additionally, subscribing to this channel will ensure that you receive more updates in the future. Thank you.